as we continue on with our study of the first epistle of Peter, notice that on the top of the apostles' priority concerns is that of the witness of believers. He reveals that Christians are saved for the purpose of declaring the excellencies of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Take note of that verse, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, because this serves as the key verse for the entire epistle. Once again, we are saved for the purpose of declaring the excellencies of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Now, we accomplish this verbally through the proclamation of the gospel message, but the Apostle Peter seems to be emphasizing our visual witness our witness in terms of our behavior, how we conduct ourselves. And he says that the way to do this is to live such good lives, such excellent lives, that others may find no ground on which to malign our faith. Now the apostle applies excellent living to various areas of life to various relationships. At first, he talks about our relationship to civil government. And then he proceeds to talk about our relationship with our earthly masters, our employers. And now he talks about our relationship with our spouse, that is, in marriage. And the attitude uh, that he highlights in all these relationships is that of the attitude of submission. Uh, this is what Peter means when he says, live such good lives, live such excellent lives, and such submissive attitude would silence those who are out to criticize our faith. This is the attitude believers ought to focus on if they want to have a shining witness. But let me add this. This is also the attitude where there is a lot of struggle. And it is no wonder uh, that Peter pounds on this again and again. The title of our message for today is submission in marriage. And our passage is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Let me read that to you. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes, Instead, it should be of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. First and foremost, the Apostle Peter addresses the Christian wife. 
and he talks about the submission of the wife. He gives a command. Notice what he says in uh, the first verse. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands. He begins by saying, in the same way. He talks about the previous passage, right? He talks about as uh, we submit to the civil government, as we submit to uh, uh, that of our earthly masters. So now, wives, Christian wives, submit to your husbands. It carries the idea of obedience, doesn't it? Obedience, respect, and that of service. Uh, th those are the, the things that uh, are included in that command to submit. We are to obey. We are to give respect. We are to serve. Now, it has nothing to do with one's ability. Understand that this is not a question of whether women can or cannot do certain things. Uh, the feminists, the feminists would insist that submitting to another means that you are inferior to the one you submit to. No, not necessarily. This has nothing to do with our ability. It has also nothing to do with inherent quality or our value before God especially. Men and women are of equal status. Christian men and Christian women are of equal status before God. Being a leader does not mean that the ones who are following are inferior. Uh, whether it be physical, emotional, or even mental, especially when we deal with the spiritual aspect. It does not mean that the woman is less valuable or inferior to their husbands. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 11 to 12, the Apostle Paul emphasizes, uh, emphasizes our need for each other. Man, woman, complement each other in this marriage relationship. He says, in the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man. Nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. Don't you love that? You know? Uh, 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 it is not that women are inferior or men are superior to their wives. Certainly not. This is a, a design given by God so that there would be order in the family. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Once again, the Apostle Paul reiterates our, our uh, being equal in the sight of God. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Again, God simply instituted this pattern for order's sake. You see, the Bible says that God is a God of order. Even the Trinity, the Godhead, has order. Father, Son, Spirit are distinct in persons, but they are one God. No one is inferior to the other. But notice also that in that Godhead, there is submission. The Son submits to the Father. He says, my food is to do the will of Him who sent me. There is obedience to the Father. And the Holy Spirit, 
His role is to bring glory and honor to the Son. There is submission. There is leadership and followership. But notice, one is not inferior or superior to the other. Uh, this becomes uh, uh, the, the best example of leadership and followership. Now let's talk about the coverage of this command. The Apostle Peter says, So that if any of them do not believe the word. Christian wives are commanded to submit to their husbands. Notice this even if they are not believers. A question that may have arisen in early New Testament times was this. Are Christian wives expected to submit to their unsaved husbands? I mean, they know better than them, right? Uh, wives, because they are Christians, know better then their unsaved husbands. So are they expected to submit to their unsaved husbands? In fact, uh, Christian women seem to be asking whether they should remain with their unsaved husbands. Well, the Apostle Paul addresses this in his first letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. He says there, And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. And in verse 14, For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Now, don't misunderstand. He is not saying uh, that uh, the unsaved spouse is automatically saved or will be automatically saved. No, he's not saying that. Uh, but there is an advantage to that unbeliever when he is connected to a believer. Uh, he is close to salvation isn't he? He is close to God uh, because of his affinity to his saved spouse, to his saved wife. So he urges wives, a saved wives and saved husbands, don't divorce your spouses simply because they are unbelievers. So both Peter and Paul affirms the biblical command for women to submit, regardless of whether their husbands are believers or not. Now we come to the concern. Peter says, They may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. Can you see the concern? The primary concern of a Christian wife who is married to an unsaved husband, is his salvation. And the submission of the Christian wife to her unsaved husband is intended to lead him to Jesus Christ. Understand this, that this is God's specified way to draw the unsaved husband to Jesus Christ. It is not by nagging him to death. No, it is not by constantly badgering him, even with a gospel message. That is not God's way of drawing the husband, the unsaved husband, to himself. But God's specified way is for the wife to faithfully fulfill her role. To submit to her husband. Now it is, it is quite sad uh, that Christians do not consider their witness as a priority issue. Many professing Christians live irresponsibly 
and they have absolutely no regard as to whether they, their behavior drives away people from Christ or not. The Christian wife ought to put that as a primary concern. More than, more than her rights, more than what she thinks she deserves in life, her primary concern is that of the salvation of her spouse. Peter goes on to describe for us this submission that he charges wives uh, uh, to do. He says, first and foremost, Submission is accompanied by purity. He says there, when they see the purity of your lives. I like the fact that Peter adds purity. In other words, uh, your submission, Christian wife, your submission to your husband is out of your obedience to God. Uh, when, when you submit to your husband, your husband sees your holiness. Tremendous, isn't it? But this also implies that your submission to your husband is subservient to your obedience to Jesus Christ. You see, Peter does not advocate mindless or absolute submission. Certainly not. We should never, never disobey God in the name of submission. The woman who submits to her husband says this. I want us to listen carefully. Wives, Christian wives, uh, listen to this carefully. When you submit to your husband, this is what you're telling him. I desire your leadership. And I give you the right to lead me. And I will do nothing to resist that. However, use that leadership for my benefit. And if he's a Christian, use your leadership for my own spiritual development. Understand that I cannot follow you into sin. Uh, some of you are uh, single ladies, and perhaps you have your boyfriends. This is something that you can verbalize. You can uh, tell your would-be husband, I cannot follow you into sin. I want you to lead me, but my submission to you will be because of my obedience to Jesus Christ. He also says that submission is out of reverence for God. When they see the reverence of your lives, this is wonderful motivation, isn't it? Huh? Uh, because it's not always that uh, it's easy for, for the wife to submit to her husband. Now what we do, we actually do for God. Sometimes we feel that the task is unfair. Sometimes it's demeaning. But when we realize that we are doing this out of reverence, out of our obedience and worship to God, then that adds to the motivation, doesn't it? And thirdly, submission involves humility. Peter says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great, uh, great worth in God's sight. He applies... Uh, Humility in the aspect of apparel or demeanor. Understand that Peter was not going against adorning per se, but he was going against the preoccupation of women 
with their appearance. And this was part of the culture. Uh, there was even a historian, you know, who mentioned that uh, women take so much time in beautifying uh, themselves that they fail to serve their husbands. They fail to, uh, to address the needs of their husbands. Modesty. Isn't that a, uh, uh, an evidence of one's humility, of one's submissive attitude? He also applies humility in the area of service. In other words, humility means we seek to attend to the needs of our spouse. We, tend, we, we ought to tend to his, uh, to his various needs. Uh, such is a servant attitude. And then Peter also adds a quiet spirit. Ah, I'm sure uh, many women would resent this, you know, when, when it says there they ought to be quiet. But it's not simply being, uh, being mum about things, you know, not speaking at all. That's not what Peter is saying here. But a quiet spirit is one that avoids making cutting or, uh, or demeaning, demeaning remarks nagging. The idea is that through your words, you make your husband look dumb. You make your husband look inferior. I urge you, ladies, I urge you, Christian wives, listen to your husbands. Make them know how much uh, their work uh, means to you, means to your family. Lift up his spirit. That's what Peter is trying to drive at. And he goes to his commendation. And I love this, you know. This is of great worth in God's sight. God considers such a submissive attitude as valuable and beautiful. This is important to God. And he calls wives, uh, he calls wives to uh, make themselves beautiful, to adorn themselves before God with this attitude of submission. I do believe that as Christians, our desire is to please God more than pleasing the world or pleasing others. This is God's standard of beauty. He goes on to say in verses 5 and 6, For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Do we want to make ourselves beautiful before God? We should be more preoccupied with developing godly virtues rather than beautifying ourselves physically. This is the responsibility and the way women, the way wives ought to submit to their husbands. Now, we turn to the last verse and the Apostle Peter addresses the husband. He talks about the submission of the husband. Yes, you heard me right. The submission of the husband. Notice how he begins. Husbands in the same way. <laughs> we may not think of the husband as submitting, but uh, uh, it's, it's important to note down uh, the way the apostle Peter begins his command to the husband. In the same way. Sounds familiar? Sounds familiar? 
That's how he began his, uh, his exhortation to the Christian wives, right? In the same way. In other words, uh, uh, like our submission to civil authorities, like our submission to our earthly masters, our employers, like that of your wife, Submitting to the husband uh, uh, yourself? Well, you ought to submit our, yourself as well to your wife. Huh. Let, me, let me explain. Submission, you see, uh, uh, if we expand the term, is actually an attitude, more of an attitude that is focused not on the self, It is not preoccupied with his own rights or own needs. But rather, it is an attitude that is focused on meeting the needs of others. In a marriage relationship, submission is the attitude of uh, putting the need of your spouse ahead of yours. And if that is the definition of submission, then this applies not only to the wife, but also to the husband. The wife submits by accepting the leadership of her husband. But notice this. The husband uh, also maintains a submissive attitude when he is thinking of ways, always thinking of ways to meet the needs of his wife. That's uh, our way, men. That's our way of submitting to our wives. He mentions two responsibilities of men in marriage. The responsibility of thoughtful consideration. He says, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. I love that term, being considerate. The New American Standard Bible says, live with your wife in an understanding way. It literally means according to knowledge. That's what consideration means, according to knowledge. What Peter is telling husbands to do is to get to know your wife. Each, uh, each day that you live with your wife ought to be a learning experience. You ought to grow in terms of your knowledge, your intimate knowledge of your wife. For instance, what does your wife love? Uh, what, what brings her great joy? What delights her? You see, when we determine to know that and we act accordingly, then we are able to meet her needs. We are able to attend to her. Now, let's go to something that's negative. What makes her mad? What irritates her? Huh? Uh, that means to say that we avoid those things. We do not do anything that would lead her to anger or lead her to resentment. Know your wife. Act accordingly to that knowledge that you have. Another responsibility of husbands is that of respect. Peter says, and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs of, uh, with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. When we say respect, never, never demean your wife. Belittle your wife. Ah, you know, wives ought to respect their husbands Yes, but husbands ought to respect their wives as well. There are times when, uh, when we make hurting, hurting remarks, demeaning remarks 
We ought to consider our wives of great value. The Apostle Peter says, consider her as a weaker partner. Now, again, don't misunderstand that. Peter is not demeaning women, but when he says the weaker vessel or the weaker partner, it, it, it means consider, consider your wives as this fragile, valuable vase. Huh? Uh, which you hold, which you hold with, with much care. That's how we ought to treat our wives. You know, emotionally, emotionally, we should, we ought to be careful not to damage her feelings, not to hurt her feelings. She's fragile. And furthermore, Jesus considers your wife with great value. Peter says, understand this, men. She, your wife, is a fellow heir with you of the gracious gift of life. Don't you love that? You know, he, she is valuable before God and therefore we ought to treat her with much value as well. Much has been said. Let me close with this. Understand that Peter is talking to believers, the believing wife and the believing husband. It assumes, first and foremost, that you have submitted yourself to Jesus Christ, to His Lordship, to His Kingship. You see, this would not make any sense to someone who is not submitted to Christ, who has not accepted Jesus Christ. Perhaps for some of you watching this video, uh, this is where you must begin. Have you submitted yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Uh, this this. Uh, exhortation, the passage of Scripture also assumes that you accept, you believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. Is it to you? When you believe in Christ, you also make His Word, the Bible, supreme in your life. Thirdly, it also assumes that uh, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, indwelling us. And isn't He, isn't He the one who empowers us to accomplish that which we may consider as humanly impossible? The Holy Spirit indwells us and empowers us to accomplish this, to be submissive, to our husbands and submissive to our wives. And lastly, uh, I talk to people here who, whose primary concern is making Jesus Christ known to everyone, right? That's what a believer is. The, the topmost issue is glorifying Jesus Christ. And when we live out excellent lives, indeed, God, Jesus Christ, is glorified in and through us, individually and corporately as a church. God bless you.